It's Wednesday. That means we're breaking down a lot of the news and notes heading into the weekend, the Thursday night matchup. But we're getting into that giant, oversized Santa sack of mailbag questions from you directly from the Foot Clan. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Guys, I uh, I figured something out. You like football? It's the best. Not uh, like one game? No, no, two I'm, games. I'm, no, if you like something, you don't want one of it. You want I all want of it? All of it. <laughs> well, look, some of you can't get Direct TV where you live. That's not a problem because you can stream NFL Sunday Ticket on your favorite devices without a satellite and get those front row seats to every live out of market game every Sunday afternoon. You can follow your favorite team. You can follow your favorite players like we do. Uh, you can stream it with no satellite, and you can get access to things like player tracker and shortcuts and all the cool stuff that everybody else can get with DirecTV. Go online to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready now to see if you're eligible. Pro tip, use the promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout and save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to nflsundaytickettv slash Sunday ready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's so great to be back here, Wednesday, October 6th, talking fantasy football with the people. Jason Moore, present accounted for. Oh, yeah. Mike Wright. Hello. Now, Mike, you, you recently had a, a new haircut. It, it mm -hmm. received some mm -hmm. notoriety. Oh, it was a great haircut. Um, and then to, and it's two days in, you're back in a hat. What happened today? The uh, the shower. Are you doing okay? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. The... Uh, the timing of the shower was a little bit earlier yesterday. Did the uh, the workout when I got home and then showered after that. So just so it, no shower this morning. Yeah, it was not this morning, and it was, I don't know. It just you didn't, you the didn't timing work. didn't work out. Also, uh, I have this huge, gigantic forehead. Mm. Oh, that mm -hmm. we, uh, like, no amount of haircut can get rid of that. So just every few days you feel yeah, you need to cover to, it. Every once in a while, I, I catch it and I'm like, ooh, like you have a hat. <laughs> we got to do something about we that. We got to cover that up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not today. Uh, I'll boil in. Uh, I'm going to put you on. But what did you just call it? A six head. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. No, I've I've heard five head, but six head is it's where even, you're at it's now. It, yeah, it's a little. <laughs> is that like a nose? Does it grow over time? Your forehead? I guess it does. It, with yeah, because the, the hair goes yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. Hair goes back and the ears get bigger. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad to be here. I want to give a shout out. We haven't kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around the Megla Bowl because pff, it's the Megla Bowl. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're four weeks in. And I figured it'd be nice to shout out uh, the Hossi Rock Stars mm. who are 4 0 and have a Megla Bowl high. Of 680.42 points, that is the most in all of the Megla Bowl, which is, how many people are in that? 15,000 plus? Somewhere I don't, around there? I don't remember. It's a lot. So, uh, for all of you Megla Bowlers out there. How many points? 680. 680. Oh, are you checking your team? Yeah, and let me let me just uh, give you a point of reference here. Um, in my Megla Bowl league, I am eh, in first place and have the most points scored in the league and I have 482. Wow. <laughs> so his team is be dominating. It's the mega list. So far, but this is a long season, and I'm going to call it now. I would take the field. I did hear he just <laughs> lost uh, David my opportunity. Oh, bro. So that's going to hurt. A uh, couple both, of, brother. <laughs> of housekeeping things. We have Spotify Green Room this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, if you aren't familiar with that, we do a live episode. We hang out. We talk to the... The listeners in the room, we bring them up on stage. We we talk what's going on in fantasy and answer some questions. Uh, you can get the Green Room app. It's a live audio app from Spotify. It's free. It's good vibes in there, man. 
It's, it's fun. fun. It's a good time. It's it's diff- if No one has to see your forehead. Oh, yeah. That's the best part. You unbutton the top button. You know what I mean? Like Of my forehead? No. No. I'm I'm I was moving on. Like, you know, your yeah. your shirt. You, you, relax. Uh, this is a very buttoned up show, is what you're saying. Exactly. This and is that's- a, this is like a tuxedo show. <laughs> and that one is like a this is like a tuxedo shirt show. Right. <laughs> uh yeah, so that's today. Three PM Pacific, six PM Eastern. We're doing it all season long and it's free and you you just want to get in the room early. Mm-hmm. Um because it does cap out and fill up and it's the room where it happened. Yeah. Well, it's a good time. Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow us. Mike at FF Hitman. Jason at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. And the community of incredible humans over at jointhefoot.com. You get a bonus show. You get access to a bunch of premium tools, uh, all the premium Discord channels. And I think we can move forward. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Did you actually, is your streak over, Mike, of just being absolutely on fire? Yeah, I only got one. Well, that's a shame. Mm-hmm. Mike and I were one apart, and we thought yeah. we were really going to separate from each other last week, and we, we both went one of three. All right, I wasn't here for that episode, so I, I went zero for, for zero. for three. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Taylor was the one that you did hit last week, Mike. Good call on JTT. Yeah, imagine not betting on a running back against Miami Dolphins right now. Yeah, wow. That I, I told you, the season's over. They're done. For the Dolphins? Yeah, yeah. it's over. Uh, week five. Sorry, Dolphins fans. Yeah. Week five, buy or sell? Oh, boy. Damian Harris at Houston as a top 24 running back. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there were, I think, six people that received carries, six players that received carries for the Patriots last week. They combined for eight total carries for negative one total yards. That's that was good. the rushing game for uh, the – Patriots against Tampa. That's going to boost those Tampa numbers. This week, Damian Harris takes on a different opponent. It's the Houston Texans, and I am buying a top 24 week from Damian Harris. Honestly, probably my favorite DFS pick of the week. Price to to value. I think it's a bounce back week for him. Tons of opportunities. Mike? Oh, I'm buying this. Uh, I mean, it's the Houston Texans. It. Uh, it's the Patriots. Anything can happen with this running game. Anything can happen with this team as they're uh, apparently releasing or trading last seconds uh, uh, Gilmore, which is – that's wild stuff going on up there in New England. But this is, this is the moment that Damian Harris uh, has been preparing for his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Where you go I don't know in, about that, but – Oh, yeah. No, this is it. Going in as a heavy favorite should see – should easily see 12 plus carries goal line opportunities i'm buying harris yeah the the houston texans are awful as a as a team they're not that they're middle of the pack when it comes to fantasy points given up to the running back position and that's including you know losing 40 to nothing last week it, it's a really good line but i guess i will buy as well i was tempted if you both bought to sell but the reality is the first two weeks damian harris was in the top 24 now he top does top 20 Ooh. Okay. Changes to top 20. Will you sell that? I'll sell. Okay. All right. So now we got some differentiation. Sure. All right, Mike, are you still buying a top 20? Yeah, I'll still buy. Yeah, I will too. By the way, only 14 opportunities for Harris over the last two weeks. And to be honest, while this is a great matchup, not my favorite type of player to deal with in fantasy football. 26 opportunities in week one against that defense that you just talked about where Jonathan Taylor exploited them. He still only ended up just inside the top 24. So Yeah, but he hit, he hit a hundo. I know, but that I'm just saying, like if the if everything goes right, you tell me Damian Harris gets 26 opportunities against a bad defense, and he can barely climb into the top 24. That's not my favorite type of player. I I understand, but I was, he hit 100 yards. That was Mac Jones' first game in the NFL. He's he's it's trending he, the wrong way. I would trade him after this week. Harris? Oh yeah. I, I I don't mind that, but I'm saying that Mac Jones is improving, and this team is the Houston Texans. Man, woof. Not good. They released Anthony Miller today. Did you see that, Jason? I did see that, which was surprising because they don't have a lot of good uh, wide Why? receivers. And he was fine. And they uh, traded a fifth for him. Yeah. I mean, it's just a well-run franchise, so you can't question him. Like, what is there to gain? It's so strange. The absence of Anthony Miller. I guess. Uh, Calvin Ridley, buy or sell, 100 receiving yards against the New York Jets. 
This one is an easy sell for me. Um, it, it, it Look, on paper, you go, well, it's the Jets. They're easy. It's Calvin Ridley, who's been, you know, he is still great. He hasn't been catching his long passes. Those will come. And so it, I won't be surprised if he gets it, but I will not project it. The Jets are right now third, third best against wide receivers. That's not because they're great. It's because they are so horrendous against the run. And I think that Arthur Smith is going to want to um, establish it, and he's going to be able to this week. So I'm going to take the under on a 100-yard line for Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I mean, the odds are against me, but I'll buy it uh, as the first 100-yard game for Calvin Ridley this week. This uh, year? Th sorry, this year and this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> both. It's also true. But, uh, you know, the Jets, they, they obviously played a depleted uh, set, uh, wide receiver core with with Tennessee and I think that establishing the run with Mike Davis and Cordero may be a little bit dip, more difficult than Derrick Henry so I think Ridley will do it this week and finally redeem that draft value for a week I'm gonna buy it as well you had you still saw 13 targets and seven receptions this this past week but an abysmal 54 percent catch rate for Calvin Ridley uh, I had mentioned on I think it was Monday's show just Ridley was very, very close to an absolute monster game. So I'm, I'm going to call for the breakout against the Jets. Buy or sell Terry McLaurin against New Orleans as a top 15 wide receiver. He's going to face Lattimore in week one. He was wide receiver 57. Then he was wide receiver three. Then he was wide receiver 45. Then he's wide receiver four. What are you guys doing? I'm going to wait on this one. Um, I'll hop in first again. Um, I, I hope he is great. He was my start of the week last week. Love him. He can beat Marshawn Lattimore, but the combination of Heineke and Lattimore, I'm going to sell this line. It's, it's very difficult. Marshawn <laughs> the Lattimore. The combination of the defense and his quarterback. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm saying that I don't, uh, Curtis Samuel is a second option he has at the wide receiver position to go to if Marshawn Lattimore is draped all over Terry McLaurin. The nice thing is, We've seen Terry McLaurin thrown to by Heineke without separation necessarily. Right. Um, but I'm going to sell here. Mike? Oh, man. 15 is a tough line. It is. 15, you, you need that touch. You have to have a touchdown. Uh, so it's like the probability of a touchdown every of weekly is just so low. I will. Uh, I have him ranked in there. <laughs> Sorry, like I, I really want to think this through. Uh, I have Terry McLaurin currently ranked inside my top fifteen, so I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna, I'll buy it. Terry McLaurin is good. I'm not gonna bet against him. He's great. I'll sell it. I think the ping pong of games continues for Terry McLaurin, which is uh, probably. I do like following those trends. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> That was Buy Yourself from PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit towards some sweet sports memorabilia at PristineAuction.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. What is happening in Seattle with Chris Carson? He didn't practice on Tuesday. They play this Thursday. They're the Thursday night football game. He, he seeded a ton of carries, maybe due to this injury, to Alex Collins. Like, how are you viewing this situation? Ah, uh, you f you're freaked out. If you if you were counting on Chris Carson for this week, uh, hopefully you got this news later uh, yesterday and you were able to adjust your waiver strategy accordingly and perhaps at least if you have Carson on your team, maybe you prioritized – Alex Collins a little bit more just to protect yourself. I I'm not ruling Chris Carson out. Well, I, mean, I can't, but I'm saying I think there is still a chance that he plays. He I believe in week one was on the the injury yeah, report this, for a neck injury. This but, injury popped up in week one, but so this, this isn't this isn't new. But he did practice in full like that week, right? Um, but but, but short week, short week. Wouldn't you expect him to get rest? Like this yes. is one of those. This is one of those situations where it sounds scary because you're like he's got a neck injury, he didn't practice, and it's a short week. So you just it, the narrative makes you think he's going to miss. But I mean, I'd make other plans though, right? Sure, because you've got to be prepared, especially well, if you're the Chris Carson manager. Yeah, I mean, you're you're playing the Rams, right? Yeah, the matchup sucks, and then you're going to split. Like there, there's not a high likelihood that these four three days of rest are going to change what they did this past week. 
So right. I, it this, just seems this scary. Past week, the results were very split, uh, almost an equal carry count. Uh, Alex Collins got the touchdown last week, and Alex Collins is a is a very fine backup. Yeah, if Chris is. Carson were to actually miss the game, Alex Collins would would be valuable because he'd be by himself. Teddy Bridgewater progressing through the concussion protocol, feeling better. Not going to practice today. We'll monitor that. Okay. Tony Tony Brooks <laughs> Jones James whatever his name is. <laughs> Tony Jones from the Saints uh, in line to miss the next three to four weeks. So uh, the Saints ended up picking up Divine Ozigbo, okay. formerly of uh, Jacksonville. And Kamara's going to get more work than he was normally getting, probably. So uh, they play Washington. How about some targets? New Orleans? I don't know how to feel about New Orleans at all. I just don't. I they, Middle of the pack. I, don't, I mean, I don't know either. Like this week, the biggest DFS bargain on defense is Washington. Like they're like twenty six hundred, and they play New Orleans, and I don't right. know which week it is for New Orleans. Is it going to be a good one? Is Washington's defense this bad? Is this the week where those two things come up against each other and it works out because they're at home? How much will this offense change when Michael Thomas comes back? We haven't really brought his name up, but we're heading into week five. I'm yeah. glad you'd brought it up. And this is a player where you know we we probably should have brought him up yesterday because when people are making their waiver claims that's when they're like oh I just need one more roster spot and someone that was holding Michael Thomas and is still two weeks away you might be able to trade for them you still might be able to do it now but you yeah might, today's you a know, good day kick, for... kick the tires and and see because they need him desperately yeah but what does does the team morph like they're they're past the rush ratio where they are they are now a ground and pound team which is wild of just with their with the personnel and, and the player that Alvin Kamara is, where he really excels when you give him targets, do they complete? I don't think they completely morph back to a pass heavy team, but they the the passing has to go up at least a little bit. And does that instantly turn into like Michael Thomas is a thirty plus target share player? Oh, he will be a thirty plus target share player. I mean, so he, then there's there's the, the the I mean it's you can't pass right now because you can't pass. I mean, right. that's the issue. You got Marquez Callaway and Deontay Harris and Lil Jordan Humphrey. So like, if you so if you're four and zero right now, do you try? Are you actively trying to get Michael Thomas right now? Because every every week that goes by, it will be the price will go up. It will be far more difficult to trade for him. Like you, you could be able, maybe the 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 the, the manager who has him right now, they're off to a, a poor start. The way that you acquire Michael Thomas right now is including him in a deal, not targeting him in a deal. If you target him directly, it's like sending a flag. The jig is up. <laughs> it sends a flag up to the the other manager. You what need, does he know? You need to just do a two for two or something where he's part of the deal and this manager can say, well, he's not helping my team. I need a win and put him in the deal. All that being said, don't. they're also not passing because they have Jameis Winston at quarterback. That's part of why they're not passing as much. So 30% target share, we'll figure out what that represents, right? We'll figure out if that means a baby pie. I mean, right now, like Winston is obviously not an option because they'll bring Taysom Hill in at any moment and use him around the goal line. I don't think you want – I mean, it's just a really difficult to predict situation. It, it is something where you need to be aware they have a week seven bye. He's eligible to come back after week six. So it will be week eight before Michael Thomas will be back on the field. So just be aware of that when looking at your roster and making a determination on whether you want to add him. Rashad Bateman, Miles Boykin, a chance of playing this week. Will Fuller was placed on the three-week IR with the broken hand. Will not play. I'll take the over. On how long he'll be out? Yeah, just because he, he loves being out. I don't. I don't think he likes it. <laughs> well, that's fair. I don't think he likes it, but he's really good at it. His body is into it. Yeah. Look, I've... You get back in action and you break your finger, I feel bad for the I dude. I feel bad for him as well. It's just at at some point you have to just call a spade a spade. Will Fuller should be a uh, – I want to see him with Tua. We haven't seen it. I sure. want to see him with Tua on the return. That's week seven, week eight. We'll see what happens. Peyton Barber, mild turf toe, no fracture, seeking opinions, having tests. Oh, the turntables. Yeah, I see barber time is um, – barber shop's closed. Yeah, it's it's just – Jacob's problem wasn't Jacob's problem with toe. It's just interesting how they – the irony of the world. Yeah. Uh, today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. 
Download Sleeper and uh, grab that Breaking Alerts channel. You can join the Fantasy Footballers channel too. Mm, you should. But um, you can join the Breaking Alerts channel if you want that. If you want to find out that St- Stephon Gilmore is being cut randomly in the middle of the season. Yeah, and if uh, Cardinals, do you wear that cards <laughs> out there? Hmm? Do you Card- guys have the sleeper? You know the Cardinals are number three against the pass in the NFL. So I, I so think, there's room for improvement. I think that the D, I think there's other desperate teams out there. Yeah, he's going to be a Buccaneer. We all know. All right. Uh, before we get into the mailbag, want to thank today's sponsors. Want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short, which is a very important tool. It's going to help you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, your tablets, your phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. And when you use a VPN, your data is encrypted. What you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever you're doing is safe and protected. If you're on a public Wi-Fi and you don't trust... Uh, you should yeah, not. Right. I mean, it, you know, you're being watched, but it, the, the IP Vanish will protect you. And if you do run into any kind of problems, IP Vanish has a 24-7 support available by email, chat, telephone. It is very, very easy to use. I've set it up. It's a click of a button. It runs seamlessly in the background. So you can go to IPVanish.com slash footballers to claim a 65% savings right now. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our discount. And this is the time to sign up because with our discount and their current promotional offerings, you can get a VPN for 65% off the usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot. And that's with more than, than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's IPVanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online today. Foot Clan. Have you ever wanted to learn how to box or kickbox from real fighters? Do you want to get your kids involved in a fitness journey with you while teaching them a valuable skill? You ever feel like you just want to punch something? Yes. What do you and your household do to stay active? Fight Camp. Ladies and gentlemen, Fight Camp brings the boxing and kickboxing gym right to your home with full body workouts that you'll actually look forward to and a freestanding punching bag that can take your hardest hits. Fight Camp is made for beginners to experienced boxers. You want to box from home? Fight Camp is how you get it done. They have new content being released weekly from easy to advanced. It's great for kids. Fight Camp is one of the only home workouts it's safe for kids to do because there's no heavy weights, no spinning wheels. And as soon as most people get their Fight Camp bag, the kids are always the first to walk up and want to try it out. Learn from six highly qualified trainers, all with real fight experience, like a uh, experience like a pro MMA fighter, a kickboxing champion. It, you got to check this out. You got to get in shape. And and you know maybe the maybe the running's not for you. Check out Fight Camp. You can pay for your Fight Camp over 24 months for less than the cost of a boxing gym and get it right away. Plus, Fight Camp offers free shipping with a 30 day money back guarantee. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get free shipping on Fight Camp. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. I think that sound that you heard, that was one, another voicemail coming in. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely another voicemail. Uh, do we have a voicemail today, Brooksy? We do. Yes, sir. We do have one. Let's go there. Hey, Fantasy Footballers. This is Aaron um, up in Ontario, Canada. Uh, real dilemma here. Do I start LaVisca Chenault? or Allen Robinson in a full PPR. Thanks. Love the show. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I mean, we were just discussing Allen Robinson before the show. Yeah, because... so, uh, yeah, go, go ahead, Mike. I'll, I'll jump in here. The uh, If you've been following the show all the season long, you know that the league of record is not bouncing my way. I am just missing, and now I'm kind of in this state of purgatory of going – uh, all in because we trade draft picks. Do I hedge? What What do I do here? And part of my huge problem was my lack of picks uh, going into the draft because you know I I I sold out last year, took home a championship, but my first pick was Allen Robinson, and he is just submarining 
my team over and over again. And what is the value? What is the true value of Allen Robinson with the Chicago Bears, where Darnell Mooney, like the the numbers say, Darnell Mooney is the number one wide receiver on the Chicago Bears right now. I get we can say, well, look at the history of Allen Robinson, but you could what it ha- what is happening right now is Darnell Mooney is the number one guy. And you have him taking on the Raiders, who are a legitimate defense. This defense just shut down a red, scorching hot Mike Williams, and they held Keenan Allen to like seven receptions for 30-something yards. The The Raiders, while it's, it's fun to poke, it's a good time to poke fun at the Raiders, but their defense is legitimate. And you cannot start Allen Robinson until you have proof of life a, uh, that – He's actually going to be involved with the offense. You still don't know if it's going to be uh, a somewhat hobbled Andy Dalton. You don't know if it is the apparently this rookie quarterback that the budget magician seems to despise, even though they traded up for him in the first round in Justin Fields. Meanwhile, LaVisca Chenault takes on the Tennessee Titans. Horrific secondary. Should, should see a volume uptick. We saw it last week because unfortunately DJ Chark went down with the uh the fractured ankle he's on the IR he's not coming back I am definitely playing Chenault over Allen Robinson and for the foreseeable future until Allen Robinson proves to me that he's actually a part of this offense in Chicago yeah one of the things that was said before the show was there seems to be a long ways from where Robinson is now to where you would want him to be and where you would be confident in him and there's the possibility that this is it. I mean, this is last year there. They have a quarterback problem. You you outlaid it perfectly. Chenault has more upside this week, and he may have more upside in the future, and you may have to just grin and bear it and re- or accept it. The sooner you accept it, maybe the yeah. better your team ends up, and uh, it's tough. It's really, it's really tough. Now, um, <laughs> Jason's over here just making notes. What are you doing over here, Jay? Um, uh, some personal work. Some, he's uh, just he's in the middle of a show for our listeners. Oh, our, did our waivers And our run. waivers went through in League of Record. And you know, just so you know, in our league, someone paid $92 for Damian Williams. Yep. What? Yep. I mean, Mike and I both so went in. So you tell me I didn't get him. <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> Mike and I both went in for a Hagar. We did not get him. We wouldn't have got him. Uh, there was a sixty-three dollar bid, a sixty-seven dollar bid, and the winning ninety-two dollar bid. And even some player like some some P. Ryan went for forty fab. Wow, that seems very high. Whoa. Um. So there you go. Just and Jason is making notes over here on players he wants to trade for. Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I did get Alex Collins, so that's good. What'd you bid on Alex Collins? Eleven. Okay. You would keep in mind. I have no Christian McCaffrey and no David Montgomery. Which no, that's, this, that's a fine price because he could have lasting value. Which rest this, of the season. this is a side note. Clearly, it, it didn't work out for me with the uh, uh, my my fab bit of uh, fifty five, but I used my detective skills. Went and looked. I saw my opponent Jason, who desperately needed to get Damian Williams, and I took my educated guess of what is Jason going to bid, knowing that I had the priority. Should we tie? So that's and where, I had fifty five dollars fab. So, so that's exactly where I went. I I I wasn't willing to go. You know, like I wasn't willing to throw everything at him. Uh, but I was just you know that's a little side game note. When you're when you're looking at how much you should bid, first thing you should do is you should go see how many points or dollars the rest of the managers out there have. One hundred percent. It's a really good piece of advice at this time of the year. You don't think about it in the beginning of the year because everybody has fab. But but this from here on out. When you're placing your bids, go look at the rest of the league and how much uh, cash they have to spend. Yeah, I really went back and forth on whether to pay a dollar for Jeremy McNichols or try to get him for free. And uh, I'm very uh, fortunately I paid a dollar because you would have had him, Jason. Would I? I yeah. don't think that's true. I think my roster would have been capped out. I got Crowder oh, so maybe and I Alex Collins ahead. All right. Uh, <laughs> enough about us. Uh, let's grab a question. Adam Holland should I trade CD Lamb before the week five games? If he puts up three stinkers, his trade value may plummet. He's he's the inverse of the on fire rules right now with a couple of disappointing performances. Um, I feel like people's view of CD Lamb right now is just holding strong, no real change in outlook from draft day. But are you concerned? I mean, I think we've talked about it a little bit. Would you? 
Would you trade him now or would you just hold and hope? The uh, and and the following question here also with C D Lamb I love is uh Michael Nolan writes in C D Lamb or Corey Davis is my question wow. exclamation point. Um yeah, so I, one of the notes that Andy saw me writing down was uh trade for C D because to me, um I, I'm I'm what Andy said. His value hasn't really changed from draft day from what I've seen. He had about basically 190 yards through the first two weeks. Week three was unnecessary as they blew out the Eagles and then had a down week this last week. So if if managers are out there worried and saying, do I need to unload him now? Um, I'll, I'll kick the tires and see if I can get a discount on him because um, as, as we've talked about, all wide receivers have down weeks. You know, you had two uh worse weeks from Tyree Kill back to back and I I I don't look at this offense as bad I don't look at CD Lamb as bad I don't look at anything in this situation as overtly negative and if I had to make the decision between CD Lamb and Corey Davis that's an easy CD Lamb for me I think that there ha is some stuff that's changed in Dallas because of the success they're having in the running game I mean yes. Dak Prescott threw for 188 yards in a win where they had over what 30 points so that wasn't an outcome I thought was possible. This but in year. that in that same game, he threw four touchdown passes. Right, and what? But he had an he was an inch away from one of those touchdown passes being Ceedee Lamb, right? Like, yeah, but you don't. I mean, I'm just saying, like, what I believed about Dallas before the season was that these games weren't possible. I would not have believed before the season that Dak could throw for 188 yards and they could score 36 points. I would not believe that they could have scored 36 points and Ceedee Lamb only have two fantasy points in that game. Those are both things that change my outlook on Dallas. Not to say that you shouldn't trade low on him, but they, these were not outcomes I expected. Yeah, I would go get CeeDee Lamb. You just This is now part of your process is knowing that every once in a while you'll see a game where they're able to establish the run and they're able to hold hold it through the entire game. The You kind of illustrated it, Andy, with the talking about the attempts that Dak had last week in a 36-point victory, and to illustrate that further, CeeDee Lamb had five targets. That was a 23% target share. So that, that means that in the offense when they were actually throwing, CeeDee Lamb was still a humongous part it, of it. It was 50% of the wide receiver target share. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I would definitely go trade for CeeDee. The, there are much bigger and better days of coming for Mr. Lamb. Todd in Wisconsin, is Jeff Wilson going to be the number one option at running back when he returns from the PUP? Who knows? Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Shanahan is a, is a, is a, is a wacky uh, guy. I, I Why think don't you guys handicap that it? That was because from the depths. Trey Sermon, Elijah Missile, who may or may not be involved this week. Uh, Jeff Wilson has the, the longest history with Shanahan. Odds that, that Wilson comes into a majority role, a fantasy-relevant role on his return – Ooh. Jason, um, I, I would I would put it at about fifty percent, which is why I say who knows. I I could absolutely see that happening, um, or you could say, well, it's his first week back. They've got three backs. Let's make it a three headed monster. I mean, we've seen that from Shanahan before. It is very very difficult to pretend to know. I guess it's easy to pretend, but that's what you're doing when you uh, claim that you have an inside. Um, track to the mind of Shanahan and how he's going to game plan for opponent X based on the running backs he has at hand. Um, we've seen that already through this year. And I mean, if it's a use check game or it's a sermon game or a missile or a Jeff Wilson, it's, it's really, really so, difficult. So I was not necessarily asking the question in the context when I, when I heard when he returns from the PUP, I was not thinking like game one, I was thinking like, from that point on into the season, that the odds that Wilson would be if everyone fantasy is, relevant. If everyone is completely healthy in that backfield, uh, minus um, Raheem Mostert, obviously, who is gone, um, then I would I would put it at two-thirds. I think 66% that Jeff Wilson would be the primary guy. I think they're two separate questions. I don't think he'll be the primary guy, but I think he will be fantasy relevant. The what. He can what? catch passes. That's the one thing he, that he's he done can, historically. And be, he will be the goal line. Yeah, he he'll be the red touchdowns. zone and the goal line per, uh, running back, which is why he will have fantasy relevance because they score a lot of rushing touchdowns. It won't. It, my bet would be that Mitchell will be Raheem Mostert, and and Jeff Wilson will. 
Go back Jeff to Wilson. being Jeff Wilson. It's funny because, you know, Mike, I know Jeff Wilson was a key to your championship last year. Mm -hmm. The last two games of the season, the last two times we saw him, he was the number five overall running back and the number seven overall running back in fantasy football. He was the last man standing. He also received, like, a lot of targets over the last five weeks. His his target pace was 71 for the last five weeks last year. That's not something we've seen Missile do. That's not something we've seen Sermon do yet. So, But you're right. But I I'm mean, saying, like, Mostert was gone. If my memory is correct, Mostert, Mostert was gone. Mostert's still gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, but was, he was gone for the end, and so was Tevin Coleman. Like, he, Jeff Wilson was it. Yeah, and obviously they're two. I mean, they had Michael Hasty, didn't they? Uh, yeah. they. So I, 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 maybe. I just, I'm just wondering – I can't remember who did was you actually gain, Did you gain confidence in Trey Sermon after this week's performance? Do you think the team did, I guess? I He looked better. Meanwhile, Kyle Juszczyk, great friend of the show, what up, Juice, played on over 80% of the offensive snaps. Oh, congratulations. For the was that abnormal to his normal snap yes. count? Yes. I heard someone mention it. I have not vetted it, but I heard that that was like the highest – percent of snaps for his San Francisco career uh yeah 82 percent previous week 69 59 36 I wonder I don't if, think they have confidence that, in sermon that's that's what I was gonna say I don't that, think they that do. speaks very highly to the fact that they're making it work right now without the options they're happy with yeah and this wouldn't be the the first time that Shanahan has uh drafted a player in that a running back in that range and then turned on them quickly interesting and there's a lot that can happen in San Francisco. Shout out, dang it, what was that guy's name? For uh, the running back that, quote, Kyle Shanahan pounded the table for a couple years back. Joe Williams. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, this, this feels a lot like that. Yeah, I mean, do we give Kyle Shanahan too much credit? Yes. Because well, his, career, like his career record, all of these, the, these like draft and personnel decisions, whether it's, you know, it's one thing to blame. You know, you can make fun of and blame Dante Pettis. Well, he's Kyle Shanahan's second round pick, right? Well, or third round I, yeah, pick. Yeah, I mean, he's, and, and, as was um, you know Trey Sermon, a high draft pick. Yeah, I mean, Shanahan is part of it. They they, they do have a, a GM as well. Uh, but sh does he get too much credit for being a genius? Yes, but his his offense is when he has the pieces that he needs. His offense is elite. He is a very. He was just in the Super Bowl yes, like two he, years ago. He is a very very good head coach and a very brilliant offensive mind and those two truths make us give him a free pass on everything and and paint with too broad of a brush stroke I, I think we we ignore uh, for, some of the faults for, and obviously they've dealt with injuries this is what you're saying though we yeah. like rationalize it away he's won more than six games one time in four seasons with San Francisco and then he but all the injuries yeah I mean well, he, the, last year the injuries was a fair excuse to me Belichick misses all the time in the draft and he's still considered the greatest coach of all time. Okay. All right. Just say so, no one. Greatest no coach of perfect. all time. Mike's quote for Kyle for, Shanahan. For, no, Bill Belichick. Oh, no. I thought you were saying Kyle Shanahan. Oh. How dare um, you? All right. Aaron in Oregon. Why is Nagy listing Montgomery as doubtful so I can't put him in my IR spot? Yeah. 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 Because he's a budget magician <laughs> and he just – it's it honestly – Truly, it's, it's just a power play. That's all it is. It's to troll everybody. Yeah, it's just a power play to show like he's in charge. He's not going to do what y'all want him to do. He's really? going to do what he wants to do, and you're going to deal with it. And that's just stupid. Reverse psychology would work very well on Matt Nagy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, for oh, sure. It would be so easy. Yeah, someone get around him and treat him like a five year old. <laughs> I just feel like he's trying. Like you said, it's power. It, you don't have control over so much anymore. Uh, oh, I don't have the play call, but I could take the play calls back anytime I want to. We're a team. I we know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, why is he doing that? Because he wants to ruin your fantasy team. Because that's no. It's, he does it because he's a clown. Uh, All righty. Uh, Twitter. Apple Jacks trade Debo Samuel for Calvin Ridley? Question mark. Mm. Interesting. So Debo Samuel's obviously number three right now. He's been uh, magma. Um, he is the centerpiece of that offense. He is what's moving it along. Um, obviously has never had a uh, full season of dominance. He's got a healthy injury history, if you can use that ironically. Uh, 
Um, I like it. You know, Calvin Ridley has done nothing but dominate as an NFL wide receiver. Um, and, and this year, you've got one better than the other. I mean, it's clear Debo is the better option. So it's, it's definitely interesting. Would you tr make this trade based on history versus what's happened in four little weeks? And I think, I mean, you know where I am. So I, I want to hear where you are. I, I'm fine with the trade. I mean, one thing that's interesting about these two players is that they're both extremely consistent when they play football. Over the last, you know, we, we have a consistency grade on our website where we look at the last 17 game sample size for players. Both players are at 70%. 70% of the time, that's an A. Which is great for I wide mean, receivers. To give you an example, like Tyler Lockett is at 29.4%. Giving you a usable benchmark <laughs> over his last seventeen. Over games. the last yes. seventeen games, Debo Samuel is is at at sixty nine point five percent, and and nice. Calvin Ridley's at like seventy percent. Both players, when you play them, can be counted on. If you want to kind of cash in and avoid injury concerns with Debo, you can do that. He's healthy right now. It's so, it's not just the the health concerns; it's also the offensive concerns of when I. I get it. He had the the huge whatever seventy yard touchdown on a completely broken coverage on a on a I would touchdown do the pass trade. from Trey Lance. I would do the trade. You'd rather have? I'd rather have Ridley. Okay, that that's where I was yeah, going. Yeah, they is. both have forty two targets. It's it's crazy how similar they are on the consistency metric, and they both have forty two targets this year. Mm -hmm. Why not go with Ridley? You know he's going to come into every game as the primary wide receiver target. Debo may have a game where where Kittle's the target or the running game's the target. You know, or, or the game plan for Shanahan. So even though I'm a, I, I think Debo's here to stay, but I think Ridley is a great, great kind of cash in. It is really, really um, funny and kind of almost childish to think about the math in this way, but it's true. If both players have say ten great games over the course of the season, which I think is reasonable for wide receivers, don't just do it for seventeen weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and one player already has, you know, three of them, and one player has zero. How many games are left? I know it. It's it, that's not how um, it works necessarily, but it, it to to some degree it really, really is because we have enough data going back showing at how you know consistent and inconsistent um, wide receivers are, especially the the studs at the top, and you know. You know that Calvin Ridley is going to end the season with a bunch of good games, and he hasn't had one yet. So they're all coming. You're cashing now, in now. Now let me. I get the logic behind that. Although I, I every it game, is every game is its own thing. That's right? That's a very he's due. Yeah. <laughs> argument. Yeah. Now, now we've spent too much time maybe focusing on oh Trey Lance the playoff schedule. That's the same playoff schedule Debo Samuel has. He gets to play Atlanta, Tennessee, and Houston the last three games of the year for your fantasy team. He also, as you said, I mean, they're two top three weeks for Debo. I don't think Calvin Ridley's broken the top 15 this year. No, uh, 17 is yep. as high in so, half PPR. Yeah, I mean, the trade is fair. I think that I think we all lean the history of Ridley over the history of Debo. Yep. All right, website question from Nate in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Najee Harris or Nick Chubb rest of season in a full PPR league? Najee. The answer is Najee Harris. The full PPR. He's, he's not nearly the running back Nick Chubb is, and no. it's Najee Harris. No, no. The, the full PPR, is, it, you can't ignore what Big Ben is doing here with Najee. It's uh, first read a lot of the time for, for Najee, and he just checks it down. Ben's like, nope, uh, I'm not going to go through these progressions here. Najee's open. Let's just give him the ball. Najee has five more targets than any running back in football through four weeks. I don't oh. know if you guys knew that. I do well, I mean, it makes sense with the uh, that the was 19. A 19 target game. Nick Chubb is actually, well, an incredible player, a difficult or frustrating player sometimes in fantasy because you do have Kareem Hunt. And so you have a player that can come in. Like, nobody's coming in for Najee, right? Nobody of note. No, no. I mean, like, they, sometimes they, he needs they'll a bring a ben, Benny S Snell in for a play, Three and then they'll be like, oh, no, that's Benny Snell out there. Get <laughs> Najee back. I mean, Najee Harris has surpassed – 45 yards rushing one time this year, and he has three top 12 weeks. And it can get better. That That's the, the point I was going to go into of part of why I loved Najee for fantasy so much and felt safe in him as a second-round pick was he could – 
be inefficient. He can be he terrible. Can suck. He can suck and be the running back that I mean, I I projected him to be a a strong professional running back as the Steelers did when they took him in the first round. But say that say something goes awry and he's just bad and he's inefficient. It doesn't matter for fantasy football because there will be so much work for him that he can dominate. And that's where we've kind of been through four weeks. It He can improve as a professional football player, and the Steelers might figure some stuff out. Like They probably won't, but it's in the range of outcomes here, and it could be even better for, for Najee. It's funny in the, in the itty-bitty sample size. I, of the, I know where you're going. Of the first four weeks is he was bad when they won the game. <laughs> He was already 43. Right, because they won and they didn't need to throw the ball to him and check down and, and they weren't coming back from behind. And the last three weeks where he's gotten absurd targets, they lost all three games. They were down and they they needed to just keep trying to move the ball and they can't, so they check it down to Najee. So it's almost like you want him he's in... He's the inverse Josh Jacobs. Exactly. You you want him in losses. You want him against an offense that can score on the Steelers. Um, and... Uh, you got Drew Drew Locke this week. So, well, maybe uh, TBD on, uh, but Denver is the matchup. So let's hope for Teddy Bridgewater's <laughs> to be active for Najee. It's kind of crazy. I mean, 17 points against Las Vegas, 10 points against Cincinnati, 17 against Green Bay. That's your Pittsburgh Steelers offense. It's not great. Okay, well, let's move forward. Evan, how do you make trades in a league where people don't respond to your offers or messages? You can't. Yeah, I mean, that the, the truth is you. This is people, a common question. Yeah, if people don't respond and don't even uh, communicate, you can't make trades. So if you want to change that, um, step one is more communication outside of trades. Just talk more, chat more, have more, um, you know, trash talk and just fun interaction. And the more that people communicate, the more opportunity there is to kind of sa side chat a trade. Um, that would be step one, and step two would be uh, next year go to FootClanLeagues.com and get in a league with a bunch of uh, FootClan members who know how to play fantasy football the right way. Like, think of the business world, like where real, real business deals go down. Sometimes it happens in the boardroom. I get that, but very often it's a social situation. You're out on the golf course. You're at the bar. You're like you're just. Hang, steakhouse. You're just hanging out with people and socializing, and that's where all of a sudden real big business transactions take place. Like fantasy football is not that much different than that. You need to build up this culture of friendship, which the communication hub is is the starting point. It, but it's difficult, and we are we're not magicians who, if people don't respond to you, they don't they just don't respond to you. Yeah, I mean you're you're never going to have success dragging eleven other people along in a league so if you don't have if you literally have no one that has any interest in moving the league forward yeah you're probably in a dead end um and you probably need a new league and that's the truth thursday night breakdown all right the rams at three and one take on the two and two seahawks in seattle the DraftKings sportsbook line rams minus two and a half on the road over under a delightful 54.5. And uh, look, the Seattle defense in through four games, they're giving it up. I mean, 24th against quarterbacks, 30th against running backs, 22nd against wide receivers. Your core fantasy positions, you're starting Stafford, Henderson, Cup. I, I guess you have a decision between maybe Van Jefferson and Robert Woods. I've been digging in a little bit more into the Van Jefferson, Robert Woods conundrum. Mm -hmm. um, we had someone reach out from that part of the country and, you know, he put some fear in me that maybe Van Jefferson is being built into a more solidified role and Robert Woods is being built into more of a blocking role than we know. But then Rams coach Sean McVay comes out and says, we need to give him more opportunities. Um, it's just what he wants you to think. If you're staring down Jefferson or Woods this week, I think that that is a fair decision. And I'm sorry. That, that would be such a brutal choice. How do you? I picked up uh, Van Jefferson this I, morning. I saw. So I am. I want to see if this materializes into something more long term. 
But uh, do you do you go with Woods or Jefferson if you have that decision, Jason? I I would still go with Woods. the The targets over the last two weeks have been the same for both, but over the course of the season, they're obviously heavier in Robert Woods' favor. I think with McVeigh coming out wanting to get him more involved, he can do whatever he wants. And Woods is Woods is an actual good NFL wide receiver. Um, he's also playing you know, just about every snap, 96% of snaps last week. You're, you're right, Andy. He's a, he's a very good, uh, run blocker. And so maybe they utilize him, um, in that way, because this is a divisional matchup, you know, you could, you could see it be this, uh, defensive running slug fest, but also there's two great offenses here. You know, if, if Russell Wilson gets it cooking, um, Robert Woods could end up with a great game. So I, I would lean Robert Woods between, uh, that combo yeah I mean the, the, I don't see I don't think Vegas or the numbers so far this year bear out any sort of slugfest happening on Thursday night football uh, the Rams are not what they were last year on defense uh, they're giving up 32 fantasy points to fantasy wide receivers that's bottom half they're bottom half in every category which is not something you're used well, to, to be seeing. fair they had to play the Cardinals that's ah. true but I think Russ will get it cooking with Metcalf and Lockett in this game the running game could be stifled if Chris Car Carson isn't fully available. And so I'm expecting this game to deliver on the over-under. Yes, please. Yeah, there's not very many fantasy questions to be asked. I mean, if Chris Carson sits, are you going to – and he's on your team, do you play Alex Collins or do you play – somehow you had Chuba Hubbard against Philadelphia? I'm probably – if if I knew Collins had it all by himself, I'm probably willing to go there. Yeah, that's where I lean as well. Fournette versus the Miami Dolphins. Fournette. Fournette's a great play this week. I agree. Okay. Uh, yeah, what I about uh, Samaje if he was alone versus Collins, Collins alone. if he's alone? I lean – The Collins. Panthers play the Steelers, I believe, so I, I, would, I would go Collins. The what, what does or, the uh, Panthers-Steelers game the, have the, to do the, with anything? The, the, sorry, the Bengals <laughs> – the Bengals, uh, where Samaja is, I believe, play the Steelers. Um, so I would go Collins. I would as well. And then uh, just a this isn't that is for not the, accurate. Oh, perfect. Goodness gracious. Uh, well, that's Green, why I said I Green think. Bay. Ooh, that's a much better matchup. <laughs> so do you want to change your advice entirely, or do you want me to move on? Um, I would still stick with Alex Collins. So move on. All right. So uh, Daryl Henderson is a player that. I think you should try and trade high for it. Like, oh, I, okay. I think Daryl Henderson is uh, low key dominating. Where I agree, the snaps, like the, the snaps are there, the opportunities are there. With the fact that he already missed a game, the manager that has Henderson m may not see the true value or, or the, what I believe the true value is for Daryl Henderson. So, yeah, we all want to, you know. Buy low, sell high, but I think this is a, an opportunity where you should just go pay. I thought you were saying you would trade high oh, until no, you said no. for him, and I disagreed. But this is, I mean, you, you called it on DJ Moore, right? Like, tra DJ Moore is playing well. Trade high for him before he continued to dominate. This is a phenomenal offense, and he has been, uh, uh, at, you know, the center of the running game when he's active, and you know, you look, he hasn't had a performance outside the top 20 so far at running back, and I think he hasn't peaked. So he I, is, I like he's that. He's getting it done in the running game. He's, his yards per carry is outstanding in all three games. And it's, it's not just that. Like, he's a – watch him play. He's a good player. He has juice and can make – he can hit a, a huge play. And the past two games he has played, five targets and six targets. Agreed. Like, this is th – this is a, a – not the full experience, but this is almost this is similar to a Todd Gurley type of a workload. Yeah, it's just the goal line that might be different for for Henderson. It could be, but at those those first two weeks, he saw he saw three carries inside the five in week one. He saw one in week two. Sony wasn't there yet, though, right? No, but Sony okay. also fumbled this last week, if I remember right. He did. Uh, Tyler Higby or Dawson Knox? Oh wow! Ah. Uh, that that is that is really tough because Knox has been great three weeks yeah. in a row. He's in the flames, but I, man, the targets have been there for Higby. The offense is just as good. I lean Higby. Dalton Schultz or Tyler Higby, same thing. Higby. Oh, I'd go Schultz. 
Oh, really? So yeah. that, that means Schultz or Knox, Mike? Let me just that's, put this. Wait that's a minute. Incredibly close. I. Uh, how do you? How how can you say? I didn't you just say Higby over Knox? No, that was Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Jason. We, I, I know a, a lot of people think lit- we're the same person, <laughs> but they they aren't usually watching us speak. I make all the sound drops. <laughs> And the voiceover. Yeah, yeah, I do both. And you do guitar and you're tattooed. Right? And yeah, it's right. football time. That's right. Uh I would I, I would play Knox over Higby. I would I would stay in the fire of that. Okay. But Schultz and Knox, T B D. Ask me later. <laughs> okay. I don't um, have to decide that right now. Fair enough. Uh, also make sure there are a lot of players here like the Robert Woods, Van Jefferson tier where you would have them on your flex in a normal roster, move them to the wide receiver or running back slot. They play on Thursday. Leave yourself flexibility for the rest of the week. All right. I want to invite you over to jointhefoot.com if you want to be a part of our fantasy football community. Starts of the week, matchups, boom, boom, kicker, all coming on tomorrow's episode of the show. We'll talk to you then. And we'll see you later tonight on Green Room Foot Clan. Have a good one. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.